Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining a problem on closed system. So, let's get started. Now, here is the question given. Whatever is there, I will write that in the form of data. 1 kg of gas is confined to constant volume tank. So, the mass of gas is given. So, 1 kg of gas and it is confined to a constant volume tank. So, I will just draw the diagram. So, here is a constant volume tank in which the gas is confined. So, this is indicating the boundary and gas is the system. Whatever is excluding the boundary is called as the surrounding. Constant volume tank can be assumed like for example a pressure cooker. It can be called as a constant volume tank. So, the mass of the gas is given, then initial pressure and volume are 4 bar and 0.21 meter cube respectively. So, initial pressure is P1, 4 bar that is 4 into 10 raise to 5 Newton per meter square and initial volume V1 0.21 meter cube. Then when a heat energy of 82 kilojoule is supplied, so heat energy is supplied, unit is 82 kilojoule, that means total heat transfer denoted by capital Q. If the unit would have been kilojoule per kg, it means for 1 kg mass, then this would have been small q. Since it is given that it is 82 kilojoule, so that is the total amount of heat which is supplied. So in this system, there is a heat input heat which goes inside that is 82 kilojoule. Now the final temperature of the gas is 127 degree Celsius. So final temperature is denoted by T2 127 degree Celsius. When I add 273 in it, it gets converted into Kelvin and that will be 400 Kelvin that is T2. Next. We have to find work done, change in internal energy and specificated constant volume. So, three questions are there. Work done, change in internal energy and specificated constant volume that is C sub x v. Next, they have given R which is the characteristic gas constant 300 joule per kg Kelvin. And this will be Dividing this by 1000, so it comes out to be 0.3 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Whether it is, it may be required in the problem. Now, the concept behind this problem is, since the volume is constant, it means the boundaries the cannot move. So, what happens is, as per Newton's, or we can say as per the first law of thermodynamics, which says that the heat transfer is equal to the change in internal energy plus work done that is as per the first law of thermodynamics and here we can say that at first the problem belongs to the type of closed system and why it is called as closed system the reason being since we can add heat to this system similarly heat can be rejected by the system but the mass is remaining constant it means that only energy transfer is taking place, there is no mass transfer, such kind of systems are called as closed system. So as per the first law of thermodynamics, heat transfer is change in internal energy plus work done, here the boundaries cannot move, so work done would finally be zero, because we cannot get work output, because work output is defined as force into displacement, so we are not getting any kind of displacement here. The example is similar to a pressure cooker, in which the boundaries cannot move. So, whatever heat which we are supplying, that goes on to increase the internal energy. Means, energy has to be converted either from one form to another. 
so it cannot happen that we can go on continuously adding heat to the system the addition of heat will result in the increase in internal energy because basically when we see heat energy gets converted into mechanical work but since here mechanical work is not performed because the boundaries are fixed so whatever heat which we are giving that goes on to increase the internal energy so the first answer that is work done would be zero because of it being a constant volume tank so therefore the work done is zero if it would have been a piston cylinder arrangement then due to the increase in pressure or the amount of heat supplied we can get the displacement of the piston so in that case work done will be there but here the work done is zero because the boundaries cannot move so that's the first answer constant volume tank then next is we have to find out the change in internal energy for that i am going to use this first of thermodynamics concept so i'll write down that therefore from the first law of thermodynamics first law of td that is thermodynamics now this law is nothing but the law of conservation of energy which is given by heat transfer is equal to work done plus change in internal energy so therefore q will be equal to work done is zero here so therefore q value is known it is 82 kJ so delta u would also be same that is 82 kJ so that means whatever heat which we are giving it gets converted into the increase in internal energy because the answer is positive so positive sign indicates increase in internal energy and that increase in internal energy is possible because of the heat supplied and since we are not getting any work so heat transfer gets converted into the increase in internal energy of the system next we have to find out cv that is specific heat at constant volume so for that since the relation is cp minus cv is equal to r that is the characteristic gas constant and here i can explain that also cp upon cv is called as gamma which is the adiabatic index then after after this now i can also say that since we want cv so i'll replace cp cp will be equal to gamma cv now therefore in this equation instead of cp i'll write down gamma cv minus cv is equal to r so therefore cv can be taken common and we have gamma minus 1 is equal to r and therefore cv will become r upon gamma minus 1 so that is one of the formula from which cv can be calculated next i can also i am keeping this as equation first now since t2 and this p1 v1 these values are given i can also use the concept of change in internal energy that is also i can write down the change in internal energy is denoted by the formula it is m cv t2 minus t1 so i can use this formula also to get cv because here why i am not using this formula because gamma i cannot take 1.4 year because the system which is given it is not air the medium is gas so for gas we cannot assume gamma as 1.4 so here i am keeping this equation as it is that is equation second mass is known to us that is 1 kg change in internal energy is known t2 is known only unknown is t1 so if t1 is there we can find the remaining terms so for that i am using the characteristic gas equation so therefore from the characteristic gas equation it is for state 1 v1 v1 is equal to mr t1 and therefore i need the value of t1 
from here. So T1 will be equal to T1 V1 upon MR. So that's the formula by which I am going to get the answer of T1. This is the characteristic gas equation can be applied to any of these states. Now, when I look into this equation, P1 is given that is 4 bar, so it is 4 into 10 raised to 5. V1 is known to us, it is 0 0.21. Mass is given as 1 kg. And characteristic gas constant R was given as 300. And remember, here I am giving an important point here that if R is in terms of Joule per kg Kelvin, then pressure should be in terms of Newton per meter square. And if R is in terms of kilojoule per kg Kelvin, pressure should be in terms of kilonewton per meter square. That's how the units are going to get balanced. So from this T1 value and it comes out to be, it is 280 Kelvin. Now once T1 value is known, I can put all values in equation 2 and get the answer of CV. So therefore, put all values in equations again. Therefore, the change in internal energy delta U, it was 82. Then MCV, M was 1. CV is what we have to calculate here. T2 value is 400. T1 is 280. Just now we have found out. So from this I am going to get the answer of CV. And the unit would be in terms of kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Because here this change in internal energy is in terms of kilojoule. So when the change in internal energy is in the form of kilojoule mass is in terms of kg and the temperature difference is in terms of Kelvin. So the unit of CV is kilojoule per kg Kelvin and the answer is it is 0 0.683 kilojoule per kg Kelvin multiplying it with 1000 that gives me the answer as 683 0.33 joule per kg Kelvin. So that's the third answer. Now I can place this value in equation number one and get gamma as well. It is not asked in the question this I am showing just as an extra part that how to calculate gamma. So I'll say that therefore put all values in equation first. So therefore we have CV I am putting it in terms of Joule, so it is 683.33 Joule per kg Kelvin. If CV is in terms of Joule per kg Kelvin, even R should be in terms of Joule per kg Kelvin, that is 300 divided by gamma minus 1. So the answer of gamma from this will come out to be, it is 1.439 or we can say 1.44. So that's the answer and now whatever was given in the question that has been answered that is we have found the amount of work done change in internal energy and CV and with this the problem gets completed. At the end if you will find my videos helpful you all can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends. Thanks for watching.